Hello and welcome back to my Hell of a Boss Reviews. We'll be talking about every single episode, Easter eggs, references to the rest of the show. Sometimes you'll see my Sona. Which leads into Season 2, Episode 2, Seeing Stars. Uploaded October 19th, 2022. In it, Octavia is excited to see a meteor shower, but still is a little too busy to take her, so she sneaks off to the human world to see it. Unfortunately, ending up in L.A. Now the team has to find her. Shenanigans ensue. The episode opens with a bunch of galaxy stuff explaining Stardust. And once every thousand years, there's a meteor shower, which is actually Azafoth's tears. Azafoth, the nuclear chaos, the demon sultan, the blind idiot god, is the god of existence. All of reality is his dream. Solus is telling little Octavia this. Weird that both seasons episode 2 is focused around Octavia. And it cuts to modern time and she's still excited to see Azafoth's tears. She gets ready, but Stolas is still going through a divorce and busy getting rid of Stella's crap. And, you know, typical divorce stuff, like Stella wants him to deliver all of her crap to her place, even though it's her stuff, but he has to deliver it, and he's turning her kid against her. Octavia just wants to see the meteor shower, but he's busy, which angers her, so she makes a plan. Meanwhile, the IMP, Keller says have to talk, horse riding lessons, Stolas on the 14th, pulling out to see the full thing. It's a Veroska calendar that Blitz put a sticky note over her face. And there's stuff like murder time and commit tax fraud and I love Moxie. Turns out what's going on is Blitz is trying to have the talk that Luna is being a little too angry around the clients, which she is not taking well. As Eminem watches with their couple mugs, Luna's all like, well, why don't you replace me then? And he's like, well, maybe I will. Time for tough love. But then uh, after a lot more violence, Octavia breaks in. Now a lot of people want to assume that she has some magic going on, which is why they don't see her, but they're also overlooking that the joke is it's hilariously easy to get into the building. Like the door literally just swung open, she didn't need to use the bolt cutters. Despite covering her face with her hair, no one notices her as she sneaks around other than Luna who doesn't care. As she digs through Blitz's office, we see the Moxie and Millie puppets from Lululand, as well as a souvenir, and the weed pony from Cherub. Via turns her head around like an owl, finding Blitz's safe with the grimoire inside, and she says take her to the stars, and teleports her away just as everyone realizes what's going on, and by take her to the stars, it sends her to LA. She's immediately overwhelmed by all the hustle and bustle of a big city like LA, so now they have the awkward moment of they need to tell Stolas that his daughter is missing. He appears full demon form and starts panicking. But oh yeah, we have a hellhound who can like track people and stuff. So we actually bring Luna's perfect ass on a mission for once. Ha ha, LA is not that much better than hell. One moxie fat joke and we come up with a plan. We also see on the walls all over about public health warning because American water is shit. Luna and Stolas have a big epic anime transformation scene into their human disguises. We already know and love Luna's disguise, but now that we see Stolas for the first time. And he does also look exactly kind of how I imagine a human Stolas looks like. He says that he can't use his powers without his grimoire, they're just dampened, especially in the human world. But not dampened enough to not open portals and also go full demon and against the dorks. Stolas gets some glasses to resemble his four eyes. And Moxie gets distracted by someone peddling his mix album, which being the artsy guy he is decides to help out and try to get the demo tape. Much to Millie's annoyance, via using the power of everyone thinks their demon costumes. I have an idea. Whoa, hey, 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 come back here. Uh, I have an idea. Which eventually leads to a Moxie Millie song, Till We Die, which we only hear a little bit of in the actual episode, and it's the end credit song. It's nice, but nothing special. Elmo, Barney, and the guy just gets the money and tells Moxie to pound it. Then he finds an art stand with sexy palm tree lady, a bunch of furry stuff, Animal Crossing, Hatsuki Miku as a bunny, Naruto as a cat thing, Monia Lisa, and Human Verasica from Spring Broken, so someone survived and made a keychain out of her. Via is with the tour guide from Cherub. I think this is a reference to Kanye, Kim Kardashian, and Northwest, but I don't know, I don't listen to that crap. 
little costume shop of horrors, like little gift shop of horrors that's open year-round, Blitz gets a costume and gets immediately recognized as Brandon Ragers, who's going to appear in Sweetie, I'm in the house. Brandon Ragers is clearly a reference to Brandon Rogers, the YouTube comedian that Blitz is played by. Not super obvious, but he's the guy that Octavia landed on and killed in the beginning. Blitz gets crowded, but this is broken up by a producer who's eating some fruit snacks, which we can tell are tomato flavored because tomatoes are indeed a fruit for reasons. They add a YouTube pop-up ad joke. I think this guy might be AVGN. It's the guy who ripped off his shirt and said Veraska on it, now with a new tattoo. Stolz goes along with it, and both of them get tossed in the back of a van. Luna is separated to go look for her Via. Meanwhile, Via is not having it. She walks over that guy from Cherub who got in a car accident, who got into a yet another car accident. Aw, oh, dude, that looks so awesome. Aw, oh, yeah, Hot Topic. They got a Pennywise doll and a Ouija board that has weed on it. Meanwhile, Blitz, he's on stage in a few. I, I, whoa, I don't even know the fucking lines, idiot. Well, that's why God invented teleprompters. <laughs> a little kid doing coke. But Stoles ensures him that he's going to be fine. And just to go along until they can go back to looking for Via, Blitz gets instant stage fright. But he delivers the line, being in a studio, they still laugh, so he gets the confidence to go on a whole thing. Luna has a bunch of similar apps that Blitz does. Is it weird that she has an Osmosian dating app? Or is it? She checks Instagram. While getting a coffee, she takes a photo by Hot Topic. Hashtag Earth shit. On her feed, she sees a ad for Wally Wackford. She has five messages. She follows Vortex, Verosica... And two hounds we haven't seen yet because Queen Bee didn't air yet. Fee posting by the same poster. Hellhound posting about hot dog. Wait a minute. Oh, that's kind of sad. She doesn't follow Via yet. Her ad is Golf Chick 17. Sad to press 67 followers. So using the power of following her Instagram posts, Luna looks around. As the song I Like It plays, which I do like it. It sounds perfectly fitting for both Octavia and Luna. Kind of a pop punky sort of song that plays in the background of this like music video of Luna looking around at Universal theme parks by the Hollywood sign, a Hollywood sign. I don't know if that's copyrighted. This looks like if I tried cosplaying Octavia, but I wish my bangs looked that nice. Checking the scenes all over again, heading to the Chinatown, the uh, Egyptian temple, back to where we started. And at the observatory, aliens attack, clearly blitz. And again, don't drink the water, it's gross. Oh no, it's Deary trying to say, ah, uh, no, sorry. Then blitz starts having PTSD while trying to give up a pug, which makes him remember the time he adopted Luna from the pound. And even back then, she had trust issues and she had to sleep on a wooden bed because she didn't trust the bunk beds. And she doesn't trust her cellmate. And then Droopy Dog says that she's going to grow out of it. This can either mean, like, she's going to get kicked out of this basically foster care because she's too old, or they're going to euthanize her because dog. Also, is that weird? Like, a dog runs the pound? Which causes Blitz to start freaking, and he starts panicking, and starts shooting. And Stolas tosses some of that water at the producer, and because American water is, again, disgusting, it starts catching him on fire. For those who don't really get the joke or don't live in America because America has very bad infrastructure and people running the government don't care, they posted a bunch of these flyers all over the episode to make sure you get the joke. As the studio catches fire, then out of nowhere, Blitz has like a big action movie moment where he's like, let's go find our daughters. And he got like abs now. It just feels a little out of nowhere since the episode really hasn't been about Luna yet and then suddenly it is. It's actually pretty good attention to details that it doesn't sound like she's stepping with Converse. It sounds like she's stepping with Paws. Because she is. So she finds Octavia and has a sit and smoke with her. And Via's upset that she didn't get to see the stars, especially being in L.A. Yeah, Smog's a bitch. Try to cut your dad some slack. He may not always get it right, but... He's trying. Well, that feels a little weird of Luna to say in this episode because she was mad at Blitz earlier. 
I don't know, in any other episode, this emotional stuff would work really well. And I love finally seeing Via and Luna interacting together. But it just feels out of nowhere in this episode. They're pulling this emotional thing. Especially given that the episode only started and ended with stuff about Luna. And then the whole middle section really hasn't been about her. It also doesn't really feel equal why both of them are upset about their parents. Because Via didn't get to see the meteor shower. She's spent basically half her life preparing to see... And Luna is just upset that Blitz is saying to calm down around the clients. That's more important than you think. But what do I know? This actually works. They teleport back to their dads and Luna nailed Blitz in the balls. This feels a little too mean-spirited, especially after Queen Bee. Maybe just like a shove away with the grimoire because I get they're still not completely together yet. Like she does later. Solus goes back to normal, and he also apparently did clothes change, even though he was wearing his normal outfit earlier. See the stars you promised. The stars? <gasps> Azathoth's tears. Oh no. Oh my dear sweet Via, I am so... Dad moment. What the fuck is that? Even though Charlie literally shoots fireworks to alert people that the exterminations are over, Luna has not seen a firework. That's possibly the biggest continuity oversight in the entire series. Blitz text weird. Is this him just being cute and misspelling on purpose, or is he just really bad at spelling? You make the call. Oh and yeah, an Eminem were in this episode. This is an okay episode. The emotions, the animation, the music, and all the normal stuff that the show is excelling at usually excels here too. But again, this episode just feels a little weird. Like, the whole middle section feels like it's from a different episode. Eminem are just here. The stuff of Octavia and Luna would have been good in any other context. The whole have a talk thing was set up in the beginning of the episode. The whole middle section, it's not really brought up that Luna and Blitz were having a big fight. It feels like she was meant to be separated from Stolas and Blitz, and she just like purposely walked away from them, setting up that she was upset earlier. But as it is, Blitz has a flashback about adopting Luna, and then suddenly she becomes important to the episode. They handle the emotions well, it just feels a little random and out of place. And again, the kick to the balls feels a little too mean-spirited. And despite Stolas realizing their relationship might be one-sided, we're kind of back to the basic standard of the two. It almost feels like this episode was written for season one and it was held off until now. Also, as of me recording this, this is the last time we hear Luna for a while. Overall, I'll give this episode a 6 out of 10. It's definitely not one of my favorites, but it's not bad. Make sure to hit the like button, share with your friends, comment any of your opinions and thoughts about the episode, and remember to hit the subscribe button if you're new.